Good rock approach. Cherokee 7348 Juliet. Cherokee 7348 Juliet, Little Rock approach. A lot of pilots are intimidated by air traffic control, but it shouldn't be that way. These guys are here to help us and make it safer to fly airplanes. So today, I'm going to show you the stuff you need so you can use ATC effectively and be safe when you fly. Cherokee 4 Juliet Squad 0217. ATC helps us avoid other aircraft by using radar, but radar technology is limited, so we use transponders to make it easier for them to see us. And they also give them some other information like altitude so they can help us avoid a collision. This transponder is a little bit newer model, but they all basically work about the same. Take a look at this four digit code on the display screen. This is what we call the transponder code, also known as the squawk code. On this particular model, you can change your squawk code by pushing these numbers on the keypad at the bottom of the transponder. But on older models, these numbers are changed by rotating little round dials for each individual number. Okay, so which code do we need to use? Well, under normal visual flight rules, we need to be squawking 1200. Or you could also get a transponder code assigned from ATC. And they would give it to you if you were getting services like flight following, or if you were in class Bravo, class Charlie, or in a Tursa. In other words, busy airspace where ATC is watching you on radar. Let me show you real quick what that might sound like. Wichita approach, Skyhawk 1, 2, 3, 4, Papa, 3 nautical miles north of Cheney Dam, 2,500, inbound with Tango. Skyhawk 1, 2, 3, 4, Papa, Wichita approach, Squawk 0, 1, 1, 4. Okay, before I respond to this guy, I just want to point out the fact that now we have our squawk code, and this is going to allow him to find us a lot easier, and not only that, but he can match up this squawk code with our call sign, and he can keep track of us as we're flying to the airfield. Zero, one, one, four, Skyhawk, one, two, three, four, Papa. And now I can type in that code using these keys I talked about earlier, and that's what's going to make it easier for him to find us. But sometimes, if he's monitoring a lot of airplanes or he's covering a big area, he might still have a hard time finding you. If that happens, you might hear this radio call. Skyhawk 1, 2, 3, 4, Papa. I did. If you hear this, you don't need to respond on the radio. All you have to do is push this button right here that says IDENT. And what this will do is it'll send him a text message so he knows you're serious about coming in for a landing. I'm just messing with you. It basically just highlights your airplane on his radar screen. Okay, so then once he does find you, you're going to hear the words radar contact, and then they'll usually give you some instructions or something after that. Okay, so let's talk about some other squawk codes that you might need to use when you're in the airplane. The first one of these is 7700, and you would type this in anytime you're having an emergency in the airplane. An emergency can mean a lot of different things. It can mean an engine failure, engine fire, smoke in the cockpit, basically anything that you think might keep you from getting to the runway. But if you're having an emergency, not only do you need to squawk 7700, but you also need to declare the emergency. And you would do this on the frequency 121.5. This is also called guard. An easy way I've found to remember this frequency is to think of Dr. Emmett Brown from Back to the Future. Remember, 1.21 gigawatts. And as long as you can remember the 5 after that, you'll never forget this. All right, let me show you what it might sound like to declare an emergency so you can practice on your own. Get enough information out there so they can send a rescue party to your landing location, but keep it brief so you can focus on flying the airplane. We'll focus more on this in a future lesson, so don't worry about that. With all that in mind, if you're already talking with ATC and they've already given you a squawk code, you don't need to squawk 7700 and you don't need to switch over to 121.5. You just need to declare the emergency and leave your squawk exactly what it is. Here's what that might sound like on the radios. At this point, your airplane has priority over all other airplanes, and from now on, your call sign is Skyhawk 1234 Papa Emergency. Now, I do want to mention that normally you would tell them how much fuel you have on board, but in this case, I don't know because I have a fuel leak. 
and from here on out, they're going to do the best they can to help us make a safe landing somewhere. Just remember, fly the airplane first and talk to those guys as you can. Another squawk code that might come in handy if your radio quits working is 7600. And this is the code that you'd put in your transponder if you lost communications with ATC. If this happens to you under visual flight rules and you're in an area that requires two-way radio communication, the FAA says that you need to land as soon as practicable. I know what you're thinking. Nobody even uses this word anymore, but that's the word it uses in section four of the AIM. So I take that to mean that I can land at the airport I originally intended on landing at. In this case, it's Wichita. Make sure you pick a runway favored by the wind. So today we'll use one nine right. Then, once we start getting close to the field, we'll start looking for light gun signals from the tower. And this is how we're going to get our clearance to land. In a second, we'll talk about what those are. But if you get one of these signals to let them know you got it, during the day, you can either rock your wings or wag your tail. And just in case there's any doubt, I'm talking about moving your rudder back and forth. I really doubt if you have a physical tail, ATC is going to be able to see you wagging that. Then at night, you can acknowledge receipt by either flashing your landing or your navigation lights. All right, so let's talk about those light gun signals for just a minute. As you can see here, there's actually quite a few different meanings for the different light gun signals you may see. But in this video, I'm only going to talk about how the light gun signals apply to aircraft in flight. If you want to see how they apply to vehicles or aircraft on the ground, you can find this table in the AIM in Chapter 4. The first light gun signal that you might see is a flashing red light. If you see this, this means the airport is unsafe. Don't land. If you see a steady red light like this, that means you should give way to other aircraft and continue circling. If I was in this situation and I got the signal from tower, I'd probably just do a couple turns around a point right where I'm at until I get another signal from them. Next we have the flashing green light, and this simply means to return for a landing. And this is probably the one you'd see if you got the flashing red light and then you're out there circling for a little while and they were trying to bring you back in. You might also get this one if you need to go around for some reason. Then the flashing green light should be followed by a steady green light, which means cleared to land. Then the last one you might see is alternating red and green like this, and that just means to exercise extreme caution. And to be honest, I'm really not sure when you would see this one. Maybe if they were trying to warn you about wake turbulence or wind shear or something. Now that you've got that down, let's talk about that last squawk code that I hope nobody ever has to use, and that's 7500. And this is the code that you want to type in if you were experiencing a hijacking. If you use this squawk code, ATC is required to verify that you intended to squawk 7500. If you confirm that you did intend to do it, from there they will notify the authorities, follow the flight, and respond to all the pilot's requests. Before we continue our discussion on ATC, let's talk about some of the other buttons you might see on your transponder. Some of the newer transponders like this one has some additional buttons that the old ones don't have like these over here. These buttons allow you to control the extra features of your transponder. By using these, you can cycle through the pressure altitude reading you see here, maybe a digital timer, and a couple other gadgets that you might find handy in flight, but they're not required. Over here, we have the main controls, which should be on every transponder and you should be familiar with. Now, we already talked about the ident button in the center there, and the off button is pretty obvious, but check out this little button labeled VFR. If your transponder has one of these and you push this button, you don't have to go through the agony of typing in 1200. Zero, zero. It automatically types it in for you. As Lenny Pepperbottom would say, eh, that's pretty neat. Now the on button applies electrical power to the entire transponder, but this standby button turns off the signal going to ATC but leaves your transponder on. You may be asked to do this on the ground at certain airports, and it's kind of hard on the equipment to turn the entire transponder off then back on. And this button just keeps you from having to do that. Next, we have the most important button on the entire transponder, and that's this out button right here. If you forget what all the other buttons on the transponder do, this is the one you need to remember. And that's because it turns on the mode C in your transponder. And mode C is what reports our pressure altitude to air traffic control. And if you remember, we need to have our transponder on and reporting our mode C altitude over to air traffic control in certain airspaces. Do you remember what those are? First of all, we need to either have a mode 3A or a mode S transponder. And these need to have that altitude reporting capability anytime we go into class alpha airspace, class Bravo, above and within 30 miles of class Bravo, class Charlie and above class Charlie, and anytime we go above 10,000 feet MSL. 
I also want to mention that if you want to go into any of these airspaces, you also need ADS-B out. And this equipment uses satellite technology instead of radar to track your airplane. And this gives air traffic control a lot more accurate picture of where your airplane is. And maybe eventually it will completely replace the transponder technology. But for now, you still need to know how to use it and where it's required. Next, let's take a look at some of the services offered by air traffic control. Before we do, if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification. I've got lots more great training coming and I don't want you to miss out on those videos. But anyways, here's some of those services ATC offers. Flight following, safety alerts, limited radar vectoring, sequencing, and separation from other aircraft. Flight following, which is also called Radar Traffic Information Service, is a courtesy service offered by air traffic control. And that just means as long as their workload is permitting, they can offer you some different things like traffic advisories, safety alerts, and sometimes radar vectors. And we'll talk about those more here in just a second. But this is something you can ask for anytime you're in controlled airspace and sometimes class golf as long as they can see you on radar. So now you're probably wondering, well, what exactly is flight following? I like to call it IFR light. But the truth is, all it is is ATC following you on radar and helping you watch for other aircraft. Let's say we took off from this small airport near Wichita called Newton County. Let's see if we can get VFR flight following over to Hutchinson by calling Wichita Approach. Wichita Approach, Skyhawk 1, 2, 3, 4, Papa, 3 nautical miles west of Newton County Airport, Kilo Echo Whiskey Kilo 2500, request VFR flight following to Hutchinson, Kilo Hotel Uniform Tango. All right, so now that we're on flight following with approach, let's check out some of the things we might see. First, we have traffic advisories, and these are only given as long as the controller's work situation permits. And these are going to be given to you based on the positions of hours on a clock. Now, imagine that you're looking down at the top of your airplane with the clock going all the way around it, with 12 o'clock in the front and 6 o'clock in the back. Now, let's say you're on a northbound heading. This is what a traffic advisory is going to sound like. Now we're looking for traffic in line with this 2 o'clock position 10 miles out. And they'll be at 8,000 feet heading in the opposite direction because we're northbound and they're southbound. And as you can see, these are pretty simple, but just to make sure you got the concept, I'll show you one more. Now let's say we're on an easterly heading. Now let's draw that imaginary line out from our aircraft through the 11 o'clock position and that's where we should be looking for that traffic at 4,500 feet. Now there is a small chance that you could get asked how many degrees off the nose is this traffic. Just remember every hour represents 30 degrees so in this case this traffic is 30 degrees to the left of the nose. Something else ATC can offer you are safety alerts. These are mandatory for ATC to give you when you're under radar services. Basically, if they think you're getting a little too close to the terrain or an obstruction, they should be alerting you. Keyword there is should. With these, they should also alert you if they think that an airplane is getting so close to you that it's unsafe. The AIM says that they will offer the pilot an alternative course of action. Guys, I just want to point out that air traffic control is usually awesome at their job. But ultimately, the responsibility of not hitting other airplanes rests solely on you. So make sure you keep your eyes outside. Next, for VFR traffic, we can request limited radar vectoring. Limited just means these guys are super busy, use it sparingly. I might use this if I got myself lost or something. It's better to arrive ashamed than to get yourself lost and crash somewhere. Wichita Approach, Skyhawk 1, 2, 3, 4, Papa. Request radar vectors to Hutchison Airport with Kilo. Skyhawk 1, 2, 3, 4, Papa. Turn left heading 270. Vectors for Hutchison Airport. 270, Skyhawk. Next, we have sequencing, and this is something you usually get in class Bravo or Charlie airspace. Basically, this just means taking all the different aircraft coming from different directions and lining them up so they can land on the runway. And they do this through radar vectors and by having you follow the airplane in front of you. Which, by the way, if they tell you to do that, 
Then they give the guy in front of you clearance to land. That doesn't mean you also have the clearance to land. That just means follow them. You still have to get your own clearance. And that brings us to a discussion on spacing. In class Bravo airspace, ATC gives you spacing between VFR and IFR aircraft. Usually, they'll keep you separated by 500 feet vertically until you spot the other aircraft. Then once you advise him that you have that traffic in sight, you should hear this. Then once you hear that, the spacing's basically on you until you land on the runway. In Class Charlie airspace, it's really similar. They still give you the 500 foot vertical separation, but they only give you that separation from IFR aircraft. They won't give you any kind of separation from another VFR aircraft, so if you're not paying attention, you can be right next to somebody. There's actually quite a bit more to talk about as far as separation goes in the AIM in Chapter 3 and Section 2. If you have time, you should consider reading that. But this is what I think you need to know to get ready for your check ride and your written exam. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to get better at radio communications, try this video right here. If you've already watched that one, try this one right here. I made this one so you can practice those radio calls. Thanks for watching. See ya.